I was born in the countryside, on the, in the Alps, in the mountains. Mm. So it's very good until you are 17 and after you really need to go away because mm. it's nothing happening. And uh, my dream was to go to Paris. So I, by uh, different ways, <coughs> I, I uh, managed to become a T-boy. A T-boy? What's T-boy? A t-boy? Um, in, in the big recording studios, yeah. there's a, a sound engineer, a producer, artist, and there's a, an assistant and the T-boy. T-boy is the guy who makes the tea. <laughs> the coffee and to throw away the ashtrays. But uh, it was my dream, you know, I, I went into a room, there was an enormous The place. ashtrays were your dream, but... Yeah, yeah, it was mm. my dream, to mm. serve tea to people. Mm. And so I managed to do that, and mm. after becoming a sound engineer, mixer, mm. and after I, be, I discovered rave and, tec- mm. rave and techno, and then I, st- I really wanted to do music, become a DJ, so I started to do music because of that. Okay, uh, what sort of studio was this and when was that? It was a big studio. Uh, it's, it's like a, a real recording studio with a big, big SSL uh, board and uh, lots of outboards everywhere, uh, 24 tracks, analog. It was a long time ago. Uh, lots of people were not even born. And uh, it was the old way. Of, ago there was nothing like this, uh, this, this, yes. But so there was nothing. We're talking was after 1984 at least. So. It was 19. Uh, the first time, it was 87 when, when I went, mm. when I was a T-boy. And the techno thing I discovered in 91 or 92. And I was doing a lot of rap. I was a sound engineer, but it was not interesting musically for me. And when I discovered <coughs> the, the techno, I really started to want to do my own music. In fact, I wanted to be a DJ. And we realized that on the flyers, that to be booked as a DJ, the best way was to have a band. And uh, so then after the people call you because you have a band which is successful or not. So I start to do music to become a DJ. Now I do more music than DJ, but uh, mm. it was the main thing. I really wanted to do that. Is that because you don't want to be a DJ anymore? Or? No, I'm still a DJ, but uh, just a little. Just to mm. keep, the, keep a, a fit into the club. But not because uh, all my friends, DJs who are DJs, they come to music because every weekend you go away. Mm-hmm. And when you do music, for me, for example, I need a to emerge myself for like a few days. And so if you come back on Monday, you're tired, you work uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Thursday you have a very good thing. And mm. just when you have the good thing and you need to finish it, you have to go away to play. So, And after also, when you become a DJ and you play every week, it's uh, you don't enjoy it the same way as when you go mm. only once a month. Um, in those four years of being a T-boy and doing no, a little bit- No, T-boy just one year. And after assistant and after some engineer. And as an engineer, or I mean, how did your name appear on records of people like MC Solar, for example? Oh, in fact, the fact of working with MC Solar has changed everything for me. I was, it was a time where in France, everybody, uh, there was no rap. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, it was only music, like, uh, like in everywhere in the world, like pop music. Mm-hmm. And the people didn't put too much, too much bass, <coughs> and me, I wanted to have lots of bass. So. Mm-hmm. I think they hired me to do MC Solar because I, uh, I was putting more bass. So uh, I did one track with MC Solar because I knew a guy in the record company and then uh, it went out very big in France and then after everybody kept calling me. So my career started like this. It's the same with everybody. You do one thing one day and the people in the record company they are not very... Uh, uh, they don't see too far, you know, mm-hmm. they need a reference. So when you have a hit, they say, oh, this guy knows how to make it, even if you don't know anything. So, the so they called me for, for doing uh, all the MC Solar and lots of other people. So I was doing this, engineering, mixing. <coughs> I've been mixing for years, and after it was, I was fed up with this. It's not, you have not enough input on the music, and I really want to do my stuff. So I put it on the side and become more an artist. Oh, so you're basically saying, if you want to get more work, try to be as high in the ranks on the credits as possible, because people won't look down. Uh, no, no, that's not true. This. No, I think if you want to get more work, you have to be really honest. For mm. me, it's the, what I've changed everything. I, I never went into a studio mm. working with something I didn't like. Because if you go in a studio and you work on somebody's music and you, you don't really like it, you're going to give like 50%. I think the, the, good, the only thing to go in the music business, mm. now it's really special because now everybody can do everything at home. I'm talking about a time where you had to go in the studio. So it was not uh, the same. Uh, 
the same thing. And the, 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 for me, what saved me was uh, to be strict. I never went into a studio uh, without loving. I did it once, and at four in the afternoon, I stand up and I said to the guy, sorry, I can't do it. I did it because it was a friend. So I said, I don't like the music. I paid the studio myself and I went away. And I never, never saw them in my life. They ate me now. But it was, for me, it was uh, honesty. And then they understood it. They understood it at the, oh, well, he doesn't like it. So I think to be honest and uh, strict is very important. Because I see a lot of people, myself, that uh, were successful for six months. So everybody works with you, everybody, everybody. So you say, I'm going to make money, I'm going to work with everybody. And then six months after, you, it's gone. There's somebody else coming up, a young kid, uh, 25, like, uh, like uh, our friend, uh, birthday yesterday. And uh, yeah, there's always some, someone coming up. So it's uh, very uh, important to have a, to, 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 uh, to, to be, uh, to have a line, I think. For me, it was uh, very important. And you know, after when you work with someone, people, are, they look at you in the room and they know because you have a, me, for example, I have the reputation of being in the room to, some, to do something. So the artists, they never ask themselves, does he like it or no? no, no. They look at you and they trust you. And that's the most important thing. As you saw it yesterday in the studio with Leroy, mm -hmm. uh, the, in the studio, you have to be completely uh, free of everything and you have to be uh, really feel good. So this is very important. Um, <clears throat> if we could stick for, uh, on that French rap thing for one second. What? On the French rap thing, just for French one second. French rap, yeah. yeah. Um, could you probably, because you said uh, you worked with uh, Uber, and um, could you tell us a little bit about the um, significance of MC Solar, what it meant to you guys? What it meant to us? Yeah. It was a prehistoric. It was like a bef there was only rap in America. No, nobody else in the mm -hmm. world was doing rap. So it was uh, very good because it was the first. There was two bands, MC Solar and NTM, which was very hardcore, and MC Solar was very soft. And uh, so it was, uh, it meant it. But soft in which sense? I mean, he, he still had lines like, il a fait mal, fait mal, and you know, like yeah, really yeah, no, like no, kind of. He was soft on the music and everything, mm. and uh, he was touching a lot of people, but it was not soft on the, on the lyrics. But I mean, it was not a hardcore band. Mm. But he, he opened all the doors for us in mm -hmm. France. It opens everything. And now uh, in France, the rap is uh, the second the biggest uh, rap uh, mm. in the world. Uh, Market. People sell, uh, it, you can sell like 100,000 of records in France of rap. Mm. It's enormous. Right now it's coming a little bit down, but it was enormous for years. So I think this guy has opened uh, everything, all the doors. And who did you do the, um, the production with at that time? There was two guys, one, uh, one of them is my partner in Cassius and in uh, La Funk Mob, mm -hmm. in Boomba, Hubert. Mm -hmm. And there was another guy called Jimmy J who was doing the music. They were doing both, they were doing the music. And how did you meet as partners? As in, did oh, you grow uh, together? I was, did you uh, cook when tea I was together? A when I was a T-boy, I was the assistant of Hubert's father, who, mm -hmm. who is a great uh, sound engineer in France. He was working with Serge Gainsbourg and all the big stars in France. And uh, he, I had a very good uh, relationship with him, but he was very old. He was like 30, mm. 25 or 30 years more than me. So we were laughing, but not laughing like, uh, like with you. Mm. So when uh, his uh, son came one day, mm. I discovered the same guy, but mm. of my age, and we became the best friend. In the so world. he had a mini-me. He had a mini-me, yeah, mm. like in uh, Stun Power. Mm. Oh. And how did, did these projects like La Funk Mob, how did they come together? And why did you, what was the oh, La Funk Mob idea is, uh, the first, the first, La Funk Mob is, at the same time I went to rave, mm -hmm. I discovered techno, I wanted to do it, and I have, uh, my assistant at this time when I was, a, uh, mm -hmm. some engineer was called Etienne de Crécy. Mm -hmm. We made the band together called Motor Bass, and he did also a super disco and lots of stuff. Uh, we went to the rave together and we really wanted the, the, the day after, we, uh, Hubert lent me his sampler and I bought a little Atari and we started to do music very fast. And at the same time, Hubert he was doing the, all the playbacks, all the music for MC Solar. And there was a guy in England called James Lavelle, who had the label called Mowax, mm -hmm. who changed a lot of stuff in, uh, in England at this time, it was in the 90s. You mean he, he meant got records to look good? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's his main <laughs> achievement apart from putting. A certain uh, ten inch out, isn't yeah, it? No. And uh, so he, he liked very much the, the music under mm -hmm. Solar, so he asked mm -hmm. us to do a uh, 12 inch with the, only the music without the rapper. Mm -hmm. So we did instrumental, but Uber he was into uh, singles, three minute tracks, me I was into techno, so mm -hmm. we started to stretch the three minute tracks mm 
long to six, seven minutes. And mm -hmm. he told me, do a track which is not four on the floor, which is not out. So I started to do breakbeat and La Funk Mob started like this. Mm. Um, what would be your favorite La Funk Mob tracks? Would you have any of them? I don't have any of them. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm the worst. Uh, I don't keep anything I've done. It's uh, fantastic that I, f I found that. Why don't you keep it as like, I mean, oh, because what I will you show to your mother? No, my mother, I show her something else. Like? Like, uh, I don't know, no, mm. like, uh, but uh, no, 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 I'm not, uh, mm. I'm not in the mm. past, never. Okay. I hate memories. I uh, smoke a lot to forget everything. <laughs> I just uh, <coughs> work in the present and think a little bit about the future, but mm. not more than one day. <laughs> but then, I mean, your memory still seems to be working quite well, so yeah, probably... Yeah, it's uh, all the best thing I remember. <laughs> oh, talking of best things, um, one of the um, La Fang Mok Tan inches, the one with the Richie Horton remix mm. on it, it's like just the other day we were, you know, raving for it for two days. I mean, how did that come together? It's one of the. Oh, it's mm. very easy. It's uh, when we were doing uh, La Fang Mob with Mowax, mm -hmm. the, he told us uh, we have to do remix. <laughs> Who do you think can do remix? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, James Level and uh, Hubert never know the uh, mm. Detroit techno. Me, I was into Detroit techno only. Mm -hmm. I was a pure uh, raver and everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had two heroes at this time, mm -hmm. was Richie Otting and Carl Craig. Mm -hmm. So I said to the guy, call Richie Otting and Carl Craig, ask mm -hmm. them. And so they were like, who are they? You know, mm -hmm. They were not known at this time. So we called them and they said yes. And mm -hmm. They did the remix. Mm -hmm. But the end result, I mean, for those who um, don't have to track or don't know, I mean, it's really worth looking up because it's got like a really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. of I think for me, the, the, mm -hmm. the Richie Otting remix is mm -hmm. his best remix. He's very good at mm. production, but the remix, I think, is one of the best he's done. Mm. Yeah, and it's got this really interesting, like, taking this whole early 80s reggae digital kind of thing yeah, to yeah, some yeah. Yeah. different sonic modern. kind no, no, of... If you listen to it now, you can think it has been done now. Like yesterday, yeah. 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 Really, it's really mm. modern, and which is really what I want to do in music, is that mm. uh, timeless music. I mm. don't care about doing something which is a, a, a hit or a single or something mm. that people are going to throw away. And, uh, even if I did it already, but yeah, but... Uh, I mean, I was just about to ask, speaking of timeless music, how do you, what's your take now on introducing the filter disco element oh, to it? I hate it now. Mm. It has been so, for years, it was mm. horrible. Everybody was doing this mm. very fast, like two, 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 you know. You put a key, can you sample a, a track, and after you mm. did it, and after everybody was doing this, and it mm. was horrible, uh, worse and worse and worse and worse, and so mm. uh, less, less, less work. Mm. So right now, if you talk about this, I hate it, really, mm. I hate it. I, I'm into uh, doing uh, lots of live mm. things, mm. Uh, mixing technologies. And uh, that's what I, yesterday was very interesting, is that, and I think for all the people here, and that's why we brought this, I think it's very important because now uh, you can do everything in this computer, Everything, even the synthesizers, the drum machine, and I think it's great to mix. Uh, uh, some, uh, if you have one keyboard, if you have a, a bass or nothing, you, you can uh, use the plugins and also this. It makes you find other other mm. ways of doing it. But so still, you asked for this as the first thing when we spoke on the phone on what to have. What? Sorry. But still, when we uh, talked about what you wanted to have here, this yeah. was the f first thing you asked about. A drum machine? Yeah. yeah. So you still there's some kind of initial energy about ah, it. The drum you... machine, I'm into the drum machine. Mm. I will always have a drum machine. I think it's great for this mm. music. It's fantastic. Mm. This one also is very good because it's my favorite one. It's a very old one and the sound is special. But for example, I think that uh, if you like hip hop, like 80% uh, of uh, hip hop since the start has been done on this machine. It's a 16 beat, the sound is a Now it's very easy to do it. But I, I remember when I, was a, I, when I started, everybody was, because it's very short, the memory, everybody was sampling into this and taking the sound because the sound is getting down on the, the beats and it's getting that And everybody was looking for this sound, Gangstar, uh, uh, A Tribe Called Quest, The Public and Me, all this was done on this. And Pete now you, you have a plugin into mm -hmm. Logic, which is a, mm -hmm. Beat crusher. Beat crusher, you yeah. take the beat down, you have the same sound, but... Still not the same instant kind of... No, this is very important. You, you mm. can do beat, uh, mm. it's very... You, you do very fast. Ne mm. Me, I need this. I can't do it in the keyboard. Mm. Um, coming back 
it's probably an interesting thing when you are, especially at the beginning of your career, that you and people are kind of, <clears throat> I have to do everything right, 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 all the time. And you just said, oh, filter this, go. I hate it now. I mean, how do you go about these things? How do you learn to be a little more easy and to accept that things might be right at a certain time? Or oh, this is a, I think it's a way of thinking about mm -hmm. everything. It's life, and by itself, it's always evolving, and uh, you have to go with that. Me, I'm uh, completely against uh, retro, retro mm -hmm. activity. I don't know if it's a good name, but uh, for, I know some people who say, no, no, this is shit, this is shit, no, I, I'm going to do everything. I think it's not good because you, mm -hmm. it's the same as people who, when the cars arrive, they say, no, no, mm -hmm. I want to keep my horse, mm -hmm. and you're going to die in uh, three months, you know, mm -hmm. if you're... If you still uh, put coal uh, because uh, there's a uh, gas, but no, no, I don't want to put everything by coal. You have to go with the, the flow, it's mm. obliged. If you mm. go against te technology, technology or, uh, it's fucked up. It's exactly mm. what the record company are doing right now with the downloading. Mm. Mm -hmm. They say, no, 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 well, the record, it's 20 euros, it has to stay 20 euros, we make a lot of money, and uh, everybody is downloading, and they say, no, 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 let's do this, and in 10 years it's fucked up, it's finished. So it's, uh, I think the, it's very important when you do music to be completely, completely free mm -hmm. and to never put boundaries. Never, never, never. And go with the flow, with the new technologies and what you know, it's good. You, you mix what you know with the new stuff. And but um, just as a general reference, I mean, the second you realize you've unleashed the dragon and you've done something and you realize, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I was part of it. I have, can I reverse it? How do you go on in that moment when you feel like, oh, maybe that was someone? Oh, no, 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 I don't care. Us? Mm. Hmm? No, 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 this mm. I don't care. It was a moment mm. in my life. It was at the start mm. when we did it, it was mm. cool. You know? mm. So after everybody fucked it up. Mm. But uh, I was already mm. somewhere else. So I don't care. Uh, so coming up with a formula is great, but generating it over and over and over. Exactly. That's the formula was uh, ours and uh, mm. our friend, Daft Punk. Uh, mm. No, in fact, mm. the French touch thing was uh, mainly because uh, in Paris, we loved Chicago. But when the people tell me, oh, yes, the French touch and everything, mm. it's like filter disco. I have mm. records of filter disco, which are mm. from 88. Mm. I have a Paul Johnson from 88, 89. It was filter disco. Mm. Never, nobody in Paris mm. invented everything like this. Uh, everybody was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I'll mm. say. It's Chicago music, so it's Chicago house music. And in Paris, we love this. Daft Punk loved it, mm. us, we loved it. All the, the guys who were doing this, mm. we loved it. But after now, we, it's not possible anymore. Mm. But you have to evolve and do whatever you want. Now we do something else, people do something else. If there's some people still doing this. Um, what role does it um, play in these kind of things? If you, ha um, I mean, in France, they have this thing, or they used to have this quota of French music to be played on the radio, a certain percentage. Yeah. And at some stage they figured out, oh, it's not, doesn't, it's not necessarily about having lyrics, but it just has to be French produced, right? No, 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 lyrics. Lyrics as yeah, well. Yeah. So, so uh, that's why we never go on the radio. Okay, but I mean, you have radio stations like Nova and stuff, which are a lot yeah, better than. Yeah, but Nova, it's like if they play mm. the records, like 25 people listening. If you, mm. It's very good, Nova, but uh, it doesn't mm. go to the mass. The kids, they don't. But still, you had for like a, a city of that size a lot better radio than most other cities in the world. You think? I mean, back like ten years ago, it was perhaps, like, yeah, perhaps. Where's ah. Christian? He used to live there. I mean, as so, well. I mean, we were like when you passed Paris, it was, was like, oh, finally some relief for at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah Nova is good, but outside mm. of Paris, it's finished. Mm. So mm. France is like uh, sixty million people, and uh, mm. Paris is like eight million or six or five. I don't even know. So that means that. People know, but outside of Paris, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Outside of Paris, it's only commercial music, horrible things like an MTV, mm -hmm. like everywhere. Sorry for MTV. <laughs> but I mean, there you said it, sorry for them, but I mean, I've seen a couple of your videos on there as well. Yeah. I mean, how do you deal with the machine there? I deal, I deal with it. Mm. I do this music for myself first, mm -hmm. to spend my time, you know? Mm -hmm. For me, doing music is that I can't do anything else. I'm at home and at mm. night I, I get bored, so I do tracks. After, it's my living, it's the way I have to live. So I put records out. Mm -hmm. Frankly, I prefer that the most people know mm. them, the best it is. 
So if it goes to MTV, let's, let it go to MTV. If it goes on mm -hmm. the radio, let it go. If it doesn't, it's okay, I do another one. But still, I mean, most of the stuff you did had like really interesting or good package, which somehow stood, <coughs> stood out, like uh, specific graphic design. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you put, uh, is it you who puts the attention yes, on yes, it? Yes, 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 of course. Yeah. Yeah. I am uh, all the, my, my uh, culture is the record. Mm -hmm. I buy a lot vinyls and CDs, so I need to have a, a sleeve, to... I need to I look, and when I was a kid I was looking all the credits and I was like, yeah, I know this guy, oh, it has been done here. I, think, I thought it was fantastic. Now I see kids, they don't even, they, they, buy, the, no, they don't buy the record, and they get the record copy, they don't have any sleeve, they don't mm. care, it's okay, you know, it's, a, it's again, it's, a, you somehow... I, I accept it, but mm. me, I am uh, all the, mm. All the school uh, where I need to have something nice, and we did the nice pictures. So we have a friend who do all the graphics. We. But the whole way you set it up, it's not very personalized. It's always, I mean, people wouldn't necessarily know your face, for example. Oh yes, that's uh, mm. very important. It was, mm. it was uh, the fantastic thing about the rave. It was uh, that we were in a culture of a star, mm. all stars everywhere, and. The fact that nobody was a star, it was fantastic. So you were You could be a big, star. big, big uh, star for, and uh, walk into the club and nobody comes to you and <coughs> it was fantastic. If you are Mick Jagger, you go into the club, you, are, uh, you have two, two enormous uh, guys who push everybody. So I, I thought it was fantastic to be uh, completely... Uh, so you had to star in the, in the name already, so you didn't need to be one then? Yeah, I was a star mm. in my building. Mm. <laughs> Everybody knows me on my uh, floor. <laughs> That's very important to, to be well known in this building. So um, now, that, oops! Now that we have this thing here, um, I mean, just got reissued quite recently. Yeah. And Last year. I mean, what was interesting about it was that it was actually. I mean, we've been talking about Chicago and stuff yeah. and the influence it had, uh, but that was mainly a track-based culture. You knew people or producers and you knew tracks, but I mean, we could do like um, a guess, but chances are before 99, you wouldn't find like 20 great albums, which would take- Yes, yes, yes. Fine. This is the first album, I think, one of the first electronic albums. Hmm. Because they were, people were into 12 inch, me, I'm into album. It's the hmm. same, uh, it's the same uh, thing, it's uh, old school. Hmm. I, I, was, I was into album when I was young. Mm -hmm. Singers, I don't care, I never, never care about singers. So I really wanted to do an album, a long player. It's like, uh, for me, uh, if you do a short movie, it can be really interesting, but uh, I will never go to a cinema to see a short movie. I will never do that in my life, you know, 10 minutes, uh, and after it's finished, you go away. I like uh, movies like uh, a one hour and a half, a real movie, a Kubrick or anything. So it was well, the same. like two and a half then. Well, yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's two and a half, three hours. So I was in two long players. So I mm. said to Etienne, I'm we want to do a, a long player, and all my life I've been doing long players. And, Albums. Mm. I'm interested in albums. I want uh, you to go back home, listen to uh, an album for one hour like this. That's a, a lot more. Than, uh, 12 inches cool, huh, but. Uh, mm. Okay, um, I can understand if you, let's say, you'd be Frank Sinatra and you'd be doing Watertown. Yeah. That's a totally different approach than you'd be Frank Sinatra and you're just saying, fly me to the moon or so. So, because um, it's a different outlook. You want to tell a whole story over, over the length of the album forward, but how did you approach getting, coming from that track background, but having listened to albums back then, how did you try to incorporate that on a CD, for example? To incorporate what? I mean, how did you think about, did you set it up in a different way? No, no, no. I think uh, it's very, on my uh, experience for mm. everybody uh, who's starting to do music and everything, is that uh, to not to think too much, just to let it go, do the music, and after to see. So we did tracks, we did tracks, track, tracks, tracks, and one day you see there's 10 tracks which go well together, you try to, to give an order and you have an album. That's the really, never too much think, oh, I need to do one dance track, I need to do one slow track, and if you do that, I think you go direct in the world. You have to be completely, just to, to for me, the music, for everybody, and uh, it's only the, the sensitivity, I don't know, no? Sensibility mm. that you have. You let it through the computer, let it through the things. Uh, if you play, you play. If you don't play, it's okay. Whatever. 
It's the question there was of, almost a rap there. of sensibility. What? what? There was almost a rap there. Yeah, 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 I was a rapper when I started. Did you? Yeah, but Why only in my, uh, in my building. <laughs> <laughs> On but, my floor. <clears throat> but that was after you've been a heavy metal boy, right? Mm. Hmm. I started as a heavy metal. I, I, I even was in a punk band. I was singing in a punk band when I was a young. That's why I love this moment right now, because everybody's doing punk and I'm laughing mm. a lot. <laughs> and uh, it's very, very cool, because mm. I was a punk and uh, I had a band, and uh, I think it's great, the cycles, to see that mm. punk music is coming back. Mm. Everybody's playing guitar. I think it's fantastic. It's fabulous. Mm. There's more and more good music. I never saw, since I'm uh, in the music business, I never saw a better period than this period, because mm. there's a resistance. You know, mm. everybody's talking about oh, it's fucked up. No more money. There's mm. nothing. Uh, we everybody's downloading the music for free. What are we going to do? Mm. But I think it's fantastic because all the artists they are getting to resistance. And when you get into resistance, you do great things. Mm. And also, I mean, it's it's probably just for lazy people who argue about that because you every time you go into the record store or maybe log on to some website, you might find a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Like, I found a lot of stuff on the net. Mm. I think it's mm. really cool. It's just a way of, uh, mm. after we distribute money to the artist, mm. because or else they're going to uh, have to be waiters or taxi mm. drivers, I don't know. But uh, I think it's very interesting, and there's a lot of good music right now. Mm. In the electronic, in the, in the rock and roll, in the, there's always the same sh mm. pop things, the horrible things, but it's for, for the kids of 12. Mm. But one day they will be 18, and they will want to, to listen <coughs> to something else, and they will. Um, you just said every, uh, you've witnessed that everything always t turns Sense in circles. Yeah. Um, how do you go about like every new subgenre that is out there, no matter how grimy it is in the beginning? At some stage, everyone wants to be a real musician. Like, yeah, I think it's a problem to want to be. Hmm? I think uh, me, I never wanted to be anything. Just to uh, live and. Uh, I think if you want to be, it's a, there's a problematic at the start. Of, I know some people who want to be stars. And I'm like, man, it's crazy, you know. And Everything they do is to do that. So as, as far as, if you start to be, uh, okay, I want to be a star, you're going to do, you have to do stuff that you don't like. You have to do stuff that you are not proud of. And, and this is not, uh, this is not going to last. Some people, yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. Some people who wanted to be stars and are good, like Francis Sinatra, I'm sure he wanted mm -hmm. to be a star. But it's completely special. It's uh, geniuses who are people completely... I don't think it goes to the mass. Well, it depends on whether you want it, to hang up with the mob or not, I mean... Yeah, for example, <laughs> yeah. Or girls. Or if, mm -hmm. if you do that for the girls, I think this is the best. Uh, mm -hmm. All my friends mm -hmm. which are in rock and roll, they say I do that for girls. I say, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. No, no, no. But I, but mean, I, I somehow, true. I just, you know, had a little look at my hard drive and I think it was you said you moved to Paris initially because, you know, you want to see other girls than the ones in the countryside. Yeah, that's true. So, and then that's the true. reality of the teapot kicked in. Yeah, but the girls were in Paris still, so that was <laughs> fantastic. I lived in a, in a 25,000 people city for mm -hmm. 17 years. Mm -hmm. I was very hard on the girls. And uh, so uh, one day it was, uh, I was, uh, they were looking at me like, oh no, it's him. <laughs> so I had to go to Paris to, to redo a new life because there, the, the fabulous thing about the big city for me was that you walk and you don't meet everybody mm. every five minutes. Because in my city, each time I walk, I say, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, hi, how are you? So when in Paris, you can do whatever you want and nobody knows. It was fantastic. Hmm. Well, I think that scenario will probably leave somewhere. Yeah, we're not here for this. No, um, I'm probably move to other things. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I guess the motor bass thing, everyone could listen, I mean, to probably really cherish it. Should we probably play something for a start to get an idea or move on? Like, yeah, if you want, I, we I can play a track. Yeah. Do you want some? Uh, flying, uh, I put it's the... already in there? Yes, it was... Uh, uh, this is great because it... It was when I was doing the, the so MC Solar uh, mm -hmm. album. We were in big studios, and, and uh, me, I, w I had a small studio at home, and uh, we were doing the session at, at 5 in the morning. We finished the MC Solar session, and me and I was staying in the studio, and I was using a lot of uh, rap uh, samples, and uh, there was this guy, Jimmy J, who was uh, scratching, and uh, mm -hmm. I was mixing this track, 
before they arrived, I was ashamed of house music. We were the rappers, they were looking at us like, ah, oh, it's gay music. So we were doing this, we were locking the studio. So you French really got your whole, you know, like tolerance uh, thing worked out. Exactly, yeah? no, rap is the same everywhere. It's the uh, <laughs> same, uh, the French rappers are the same as in America. It's gay music. So we were locked in the studio and I was mixing my track and they were supposed to come at three and uh, this guy, the scratcher, came at two. So I told him, man, do you want to scratch? So it's scratch. And uh, so we kept it like this way and it was really the start of uh, house music with uh, uh, hip hop feel. It was in 94 or something like this. It was like 10 years ago. Shall I go? So, a very long time ago. Huh? Yeah, but still, you remember those discussions and how people tried to figure out how did you get that shoop, the, um, I don't know what you call The shoop? The whoop. It's you know? the sound, you know, I was into sound, I was, in, I was mixer, so mm -hmm. it was easy for me to mm -hmm. break. But you know, this is, a, it was very funny because it was a time where we were putting out music which, which mm -hmm. was done in an enormous studio with mm. big uh, everything mm. and uh, at the same time everybody was doing his music in his home. Mm. So that was an uh, ambivalent uh, thing, you know. There was a... Uh, everybody was asking me, the sound is enormous, how do you do? And I was like, man, sorry, but uh, it, uh, we have a big desk and everything, so... It was unfair, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but still, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, where most of the records coming out of Paris at that time mixed in the same place or by the same people? No. Because some of, I mean, they had certain, if there was one common thing, it was the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the compression. Oh. In France, we are really into compression. And after, there was, for example, Daft Punk, who mm. com completely uh, built a sound that everybody tried to emule, emulate. So that was really funny because uh, they were doing a sound and uh, three months later, everybody was uh, mm. buying the same compressor because mm. everything was into the compressor. I don't know if you want to get into it. Your top five, your top five compressing. It depends, uh, for me, it was an SSL compressor, mm. the, the, the compressor which is in the desk, or a compressor, a old tube compressor like Fairchild or thing like this which now are, are in plugins, everybody can have uh, 10 Fairchild in his plugins and us, we were dreaming of having one. But, I mean, you can have those plugins and you can have somehow sneak your way into a studio and have that access, but still, you don't do anything. I mean, your top five compression secrets, apart from the three you want uh, to keep so to the yourself. The only secret I have about compressor is to trust your ear, to have mm. some taste. You, are, you mm. must have some taste. There's nothing theoretical. I don't even know me what's a compressor. It's mm. like, I don't know how many years, but uh, <laughs> 15 years that I'm doing this and I uh, still don't know what is a compressor. I, do, I know what he's doing. I'm touching the button. When I like it, I keep it like this. If there's a normal uh, sound engineer coming up, or for example, when I, when I started, there was some sound engineer coming in the studio. They were like, yeah, you're crazy. The, the what, what do you call it? The, the meters. The meters, it's going too high. Uh, the meters is on the red. I said, yes, but when I listen, I like it. He said, yes, but no, it's not possible, theoretically. And I said, mm. fuck off. Uh, leave me alone. <laughs> Let me put a... Uh, I think it's the key for you all, but uh, I think you don't need to, to learn it because you know it already because everybody's learning by his own way at home. So when you're at home, you're listening to the ears and you say, I like it when it goes in the red. If it starts to do... <laughs> You, you notice it and you take it a little bit down, but there's no theory in music for me. There's nothing. Every, everybody who comes with theory, I said, okay, keep your theory for you. Probably it works for you, but for me it doesn't work. So the compressor uh, secret is to trust his ear. <coughs> and uh, another secret for me is that the meter, it has to move a lot. If your meter is like this, it doesn't, it's not good. So first of all, you need to get a meter and get There's a meter moving. There's always a meter on a compressor, always. Mm. Yeah, the cheap, very cheap compressor have no meters, but uh, forget them. Not even <laughs> them, they all have compressors, in fact. Small uh, interlude. <laughs> so here's the skit. Ah, yes, now for the question, we're going to do this. Next question. <laughs> <coughs> Hello, this is the village voice. <laughs> um, so we're going to do prank calls now? Or? We're going to do what? Prank calls. Funk, funk calls, yeah. let's call Leroy. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, it might be. It was good with Leroy, yeah, yesterday. Yeah. He's a fantastic man. I worked with him uh, three years ago, and it's one of the best time in the studio we had. It was fantastic. This man is to cherish. And you see, all, everybody saw it yesterday. Mm. So you're speaking of three years ago. I mean, why is it that, I mean, early on you were on about the attention you were getting and, you know. <laughs> No, what's so, sorry. at what stage did it get too much for you? Did it get too much? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, attention-wise and stuff. I mean, you could see if you pull, would do like a graph of the stuff you put out. I mean, you, it's uh, getting like... <laughs> yeah, it's getting... No, 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 it's getting like this always. It's getting like this. I'm doing more and more music. I'm totally emerging in the music. And now I'm starting... I've just done a solo album, like, mm -hmm. a, in six months. In fact, uh, I prefer now, then. and I think it's the key is that you, you always prefer what you do right now, even if the people don't like it less. Mm -hmm. Like it less, you you have to always prefer. For example, mm -hmm. there's someone when I was a kid, Ki Prince was my hero, mm -hmm. and then Prince now, as a, if, if you know him, he's doing sh horrible music for mm -hmm. years now, ten years. But for when I was a kid, he was he has done like four albums in a row, fantastic album. Now I see my friends, they come and they say, Prince, it's shit, uh, it's a wanker. And, 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 and me, I said, no, you're crazy, what? Perhaps he likes what he's doing now. You want him to do again sign of the time? He doesn't want to, he's a real artist. If you ask a painter or Picasso, you ask him, go back to the red, uh, go back to the pink uh, period. He's like, no, I don't want it. I'm doing what I'm doing now. You like it or not? So uh, it has to go like this, always. If one day it goes like this, I stop, I do the music, I keep it for myself, I listen to it in my home. Oh, in my... Uh, to but my I was not talking quality, neighbor. I was talking quantity. I mean, you're not all over ah, the place yes, never anymore. done quantity, me. Never. <laughs> but within that never done quantity, there was still, like, more of it. And uh, it uh, looks like, I mean, you're taking more time now for doing things. And I've been taking more time. Mm -hmm. And now, as you don't know my new stuff and everything, it's the contrary. I, I always want to do... Can we get a jingle for the product placement right here? Yeah. Okay, so no, that's no, no, new I stuff. Mean, no, 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 that, no, 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 I think we have to talk about Cassius and everything, but no, it means that uh, mm. each album for me has to be different. So we did, after I did Motor Bass I, mm. I, and La Funk Mob, we did a, a band called Cassius with uh, my partner from La Funk Mob. I, he he started to go into the club. So when he started to go into the club, he understood the, the, the house and techno and everything. So I told him, let's do a, a house project. And we did Cassius. And um, why a new project then? Because it was the culture of techno mm. to have a side project, never mm. been uh, in front, uh, do a lot of uh, aliases. Diffuse. Yeah, mm. exactly. Mm. Like, uh, like uh, Leroy yesterday when he said mm. he, he didn't want to, to, have a, to be in front, so he mm. did lots of projects and we mm. were doing the same. And also I didn't want to do, a, really wanted to do a dance oriented project mm. with Hubert, so it became Cassius. And so we started and uh, we did uh, an album which sold a lot. We had mm. a hit. And at that, at that time, it was the only time in my life where I was uh, like this because all the record companies were coming. Virgin, we were, we were signed on Virgin and uh, we had a hit in England and it was very rare. And so everybody... Uh, and it was disco mm. in France, a disco mm. filter and everything. I didn't assume it like uh, the rest. So at this time, it was a bit uh, too mm. much. But not uh, the production, more the attention. Mm. How did you escape? How did you do the Houdini there? I changed on the next album. Mm. Each album must be different in every way for me. That we means uh, we did the first Cassius album completely electronic. The second Cassius album we did completely live. We played everything. Mm. We bring a lot of singers, Leroy, Ghostface Killer, rappers, everybody. So we did a completely different album. The first one, we did it in three weeks. The second one, we did it in two years. Mm. It was a trauma times for me to do it in two years. It was horrible. And not horrible, but uh, it was... Uh, you uh, never saw any land. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. felt like swimming the... So the, the album after the Cassius album, I did it, mine, in six months. Mm. And the next one will be completely different. It has to be complete. It has to, as I told you, as I told you it, music is to fill my life. So it's just to spend hours and hours instead of uh, writing or painting or anything. So you have to change each time to be excited. So the next album I will do, I don't know, but uh, 
I think we're going to do a new Casus album, which is going to be really uh, tough, and we're going to do it in, fr in two months and very dance oriented, the contrary of the one before. So for the fans, it's very, uh, but for me, it's the only way to survive. But speaking of fans, that's probably an interesting thing as well. How do you keep your cool with attention you don't really want, with like someone who really likes your stuff and is really like... No, that never happens. It, it, it happened sometimes. But I think... Uh, I think if you do some music, and uh, you don't accept people like this, it's, mm -hmm. you're an hypocrite. You ask mm -hmm. to, uh, me if I do music and I meet a hero and I'm gonna come to him and say, hey man, I really love what you do. If he g tell me, I don't care about you, go away. <coughs> I'm gonna think he's an asshole and uh, I don't want to see this guy in my life. I will never listen to his music. It goes with it. it mm -hmm. you, you, if you, you want to not respond to people mm -hmm. who comes to you and say, you, don't, you keep your music for yourself. You don't put it on the records and you don't mm -hmm. put it out. But still, there might be a situation there's something wrong with your daughter and you're totally immersed in your own world and you really want to concentrate and someone is just not letting loose and it's kind of like, you have to tell me... and it's like... Yeah, but in this case, um, I fight. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't. Uh, no, but... Uh, mm -hmm. The good thing is that, as, as you said, we are not known. Mm -hmm. I can go in a club, except in Paris, a few mm -hmm. people know me. Mm. Never, it never happens to me. This, mm. The people who know, they come to us, they are very kind and uh, usually... It never... Uh, I never get this kind of... Uh, I never got this kind of... Uh, uh, thing, uh, you know, mm. uh, attention. People really don't care. It's the good thing about uh, electronic music is that we don't care about stars. And perhaps not now, but... Uh, ideally, yeah. <laughs> ideally, yeah. yeah. So... And anyway, if a kid comes to me and talk about the music, I will take time and talk to, talk to him because I think uh, I, uh, I, for example, the Red Bull Academy, mm -hmm. when uh, I started uh, to think about it, when you called me like four years ago mm -hmm. and everything, I really thought it was a great idea because my philosophy of uh, the music and uh, all the things I know is that mm -hmm. it has to be shared. It's no use that I keep it for myself. If I know how to use my compressor, my EQs, play keyboards, and, it, and it's only for me, what is the point? Mm -hmm. Because one day, uh, I don't care that uh, to share all my secret of mixing. I did it mm -hmm. 25 times. When I do, um, for example, a session in the studio, the Logic Lab, there's a mixer, producer, <coughs> as I told you, an assistant, and a T-boy. Mm -hmm. When I do my sessions, there's the three T-boys. Because they know that I'm going to stop for two hours and talk and say, let's do this. I try to do that. Share everything I know. It's important. One day I will die. So I keep it all my secret and all the stuff for big studios. Everybody dreams of being in a big studio. Everybody was very happy to be in the studio there yesterday. It's fantastic to share it. There's enough people making music that, uh, you, you know, it's very important. It's like... A, it's like the DJs, when I started, the DJs, they were putting some scotch on the labels so that the transporter doesn't know what's the record. It's completely crazy. Things, this is completely crazy. So the Red Bull Academy, I really, I'm really into it because of uh, this kind of stuff, because uh, you share. Not even the secret of technical, like uh, if you move this, it's going to do this, but even the... the, the to share all the experience that I've learned in the mm -hmm. studio, for example, to know that we, you have to be free. Yesterday, when we went to the studio, mm -hmm. I thought, I think it's a very important for everybody who was there because it, there was some part of the, of the day when they understood that you have to be free, that the theory is out. If someone comes, when Leroy was saying, uh, you, you have an idea to do this, yeah? and someone said, let's record this, you know, to do the snare, if you are a good producer, you say, oh, let's record it. Let's mm -hmm. try it. If you are a bad producer, you say, no. I never saw a good producer who said no in the studio. In Amer if you see an American studio producer, they're going to be very diplomatic and everything. They're always going to say yes. It's exactly what they were explaining yesterday. Brandon and uh, Leroy was explaining, you have to be cool with the singer. You have to mm -hmm. put him in a real right mood to, pr to produce and everything. You have to always say yes. You have to always <coughs> say to yourself yes. If you think uh, I'm going to go to the toilets and record it and do a song with it, let's try, do it. If it's good, keep it. If it's not good, throw it away. And uh, we have uh, lots of good friends with me which uh, are very used to be studio. And we said that uh, in the studio you have to be free and supple. I don't know what's supple. Mm. Like this, you know, mm. this is soup. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if you're like this, 
Still, you can do some good stuff. Huh? There's mm -hmm. some people who did some great stuff like this. But me, I think that for everybody, for a lesson, for the mass of people, the most, the, the, the light motive is supple and soft and free in a studio. And in a, in a big studio or in your studio, if you have only this and you do all this, you have to get free when you do the music. <clears throat> is there such a thing as studio etiquette? I mean, chances are, let's say you're doing something with the computer and there's just one mouse. So only one person at one time can use the mouse. Yesterday, it was very funny. Yesterday. <laughs> because you can see that, uh, what is his name? Uh, Michael? Eric. The blonde. Oh, Eric. Eric. He was on the mouse. I, I don't know if you noticed everything, but me, yeah, I was mm. looking at uh, very funny. Mm, he was at the mic and at the, at the mouse, and there was uh, everybody. There was uh, at least three or four people who could have done, touched the mouse also, and you knew exactly what he was going to do, faster than him or not. So this is very important to, to be. Uh, if you are lots of producers in the studio, to find uh, a way of working. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, discipline that one guy touched the mouse and everybody keep his mouth shut. Or, okay, let's do everybody touch the mouse, but you have to, there's some risk, okay? But you have to, yeah, 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 it's, it's really funny what happened yesterday because we were at least four or five that would have done the same as Eric was doing. Everybody was like, ah, ah. me, 25 times I wanted to say, oh, no, the problem, the tempo, no, no, this is shit, no, no, no. But I said, I said to myself, it's, uh, I know all this already, I don't have to show the, and it's the same to everybody. And uh, the good thing is that everybody <coughs> shut his mouth and uh, try to find a way so that it, it could have been horrible. Mm. It could have fucked up in five mm. minutes if, it mm. would have, if there was a lot of ego involved. Mm. And everybody found his way. Brandon was saying some stuff on the production. Mm. Eric was doing this. Arjan mm. was doing it. Uh, everybody mm. was, found his, his, his place and uh, mm. it went smooth. Mm. That's very important to let the egos out of the door. What was it? What you say? Yeah, Leave your ego at the door, uh. and it's important at all the, 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 the in all the places of the studio. If you are an artist, singer, player, drum machine, whatever, or producer, engineer, everybody should leave his ego and try to make it for the music to be the best at the end. Because if you come in the studio, for example, yesterday, and you start to put your ego and say, "No, let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this." You, we have to spend, as, again, music for me is just spending time. You know, it's very long, the days, we we'll get bored. If you read a book, it's cool, but after you're like, what am I going to do? You're going to watch a movie, but after you... So it's good to spend time, so it's good. It has to be a, a quality time. And so, and the, the most important is the music at the end. If you come and you say, you show everybody, I know everything, and I know how to use this, everybody yesterday was like, Oh, this guy knows everything, but at the end you don't have anything on the tape, it's no use. So how do you find a way, if you know things, and to get that across in a way that, um, you're, not, that you're talking with people and not talking at people? Uh, for me it's easy because I'm very... Uh, how do you say... I don't know the name. I like everything, you know. I'm, mm. Aquarius, uh, like, uh, very interested in everything, you know, new mm. gears and everything. So I'm always like, uh, I, I try to put all I know behind, because mm. I hate you doing always the same, and to learn new stuff and everything. And to, 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 put, uh, to put it out to people, it's uh, very easy. You put your ego down. Mm. Yesterday, it's what I've done. I shut my mask all day. Mm. That's it. And you let the people, mm. other people know. There are some people who are here for that. You let mm. them do their thing. If there's a big, big, big problem, okay, you, and you're the only one who knows, you say, okay, this is this. That's it. But showing off is no use in music. No use. I think, uh, except on stage. Prince, <laughs> if he comes with my jeans and my shirt, and he plays his guitar and he's like this, you're going to say, Prince, you want him to have like high heels, a skirt, a, you know, a stocking, and they're doing like, ah, you know, this is Prince. In this case, you can show off on stage or in the studio or everything, but like yesterday, it was no use, no use. People have to learn, they are here to learn, so. And it's the same in the studio, but it never happens in the studio because I'm the, the for example, me, I'm the boss in the studio, and that's it, you know. <laughs> no, but 
It's, I think it's, a, yeah, yeah, but it's not a, like, a, it's not like I'm showing off. It's very important. I think it's one of the key is trust, trust yourself in mm -hmm. a studio. You, you know you're good. Mm -hmm. Me, I know And then you can let, let loose because you know yeah, completely. you don't It's have like to uh, if you are, uh, I don't know, if you are uh, with two cars and you want to, to do like this, you know. Overtake. Overtake. And you have a small car, mm -hmm. it's better if you have a one which, uh, with an enormous motor that you know that you're going to do pit, pit, pit. Mm -hmm. it, perhaps you're not going to use the whole power, but you know you have it. So in the studio, I think it's very important that there's one boss. If you're alone, it's perfect. You're alone. If there's two people, three people, it's very important that one or the fact that people have uh, found a way of uh, working together. But and the, so that role can change. And exactly. The role can change. But the thing is, trust, trust yourself is very important. Me, I'm very uh, self-trust man. Self-confident. Yes, yeah, self-confident. I think self-confidence is very important. In all the aspects of the studio, if somebody wants to be a sound engineer one day, a producer, because uh, it's very good all this, but uh, if one day one of you want to be a producer, like produce music, like for George Michael, or I don't know, uh, there's a, a, an artist who come to you and said, okay, I want you to produce my album. You have to be self-confident. It's exactly what the artist is looking for. You have to, to know what you to do, to, to, because uh, it, it, it can't, an artist will feel very uh, like this, If he said to himself, this guy doesn't know what he wants, he's looking to everything. So, so how do you keep that balance between getting the best out of the artist and steering him? I mean, it's a little bit like kindergarten teacher somehow. That's some antagonist. Uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. there's something. There's, there's a it, it, that fight. You have to feel, make him feel free to do whatever mm -hmm. he wants. Make him feel bad, good, but at the same time, you have to. To, 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 to show the way. It's exactly what happened yesterday when, uh, it, when you sang. Uh, when you were in the studio and you, you, you came on the, on the mic, you were right on the notes, but bad on the time. It was like four bars earlier. So there's two ways of uh, approaching it. You take the talk back and you say, you're bad on the time. Put yourself good on the time. Or, and, you, and so the, the, the singer is going to be like, uh, uh, okay, okay. Or you can say, oh, it's very cool, you have the key, but we have a little problem with time. You know, there's a, it's all a question of uh, talking, you know? Communication. No. Diplomacy and everything. <coughs> Make the people feel good. A studio, a recording studio is a place where you have to feel good. Or else, there's other possibility. You do a punk band. You realize that each time, for example, the Liber Libertines, you know the Libertines? It's a punk band from England with two guys completely like old school, a junkie and everything. And so uh, Mick Jones from The Clash is producing the album and he, uh, when everything goes well, they play and it's shit. And when everything goes bad, when the guitar player is angry about the other one, they play and it's good. So if you re realize this, okay, in this case, put a really bad vibe, horrible <laughs> bad vibe. You know. So top this three, top three approaches to get a bad vibe in the studio going. To get a bad vibe in the studio, you can go out with the girl friend of the singer. I think this is perfect. I, I need more batteries? Yeah. For me or for the mic? Yeah, yeah, you're getting fizzy. It's very easy. But some, I know there's a new kind of producers in America who do a lot of bad vibes in the studio because they want to have something else from the artist. This is very interesting. Is There's this no the reason rules. why the hip-hop studios in the New York especially have to be so big that they can hold like 30 people at oh, a yeah. time? Yeah. Yeah. I was very funny yesterday, for me, because uh, when I was working with Solar, hip-hop, it's crazy. You know, because uh, normally in a recording studio, when you sing, for example, I don't know, uh, Whitney Houston, uh, a pop, big pop thing, she's going to come in the studio and everybody's going to shut up. And uh, everybody, everybody, everybody is going to be like this, like, yeah, she's going to sing it. And she's going to be like, oh, now I feel good. I don't know, I have been, never been in the studio with her, but everybody is going to do everything so that she feels very cool in the studio. But rap, it's a competition. When we were doing MC um, Solar's album and there was some featuring, for example, there's a guy going to the mic, there's 25, 34 people behind, and each time the guy is like, he's putting a, a new uh, kick, he's kicking his rhyme and it's good. Everybody's behind, he's like, yeah, yeah, woo, 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 woo. And you, you're on the desk, and you have uh, lots of people behind doing uh, so much noise, and you have to keep it 
to, to get focused on the music and everything. And at the same time, if you take those 30 people out, the rapper is going to be like rapping like, because there's not all his friends. There's not all these people, he doesn't want to be better. <clears throat> so that was very funny yesterday because it's what I told Leroy yesterday night. I told him, man, now I know what you want to do. Because uh, Leroy is uh, in her age, he's older than us. And so he doesn't have the, the punch, the same punch as he thinks, I think he could have uh, 25 years ago. Edit. What? We can't get that on air. Why? He's my friend. Okay. No, no. Well, no I mean, <laughs> it's good to... To, to, put, uh, to put stuff that makes you have the punch. And yesterday, the 40 people behind him, that's why I did the track so fast and everything. So I told him yesterday, I told him, man, let's go in the studio for six days. We, we invite like 30 kids and you do an album in six days, six tracks, six days, 10 days, 10 tracks. Because if I'm sure that yesterday, if we were in the studio without you all, Leroy and me and Darjan and, uh, and Brendan and uh, uh, like four or five people who would have been like this and then and then at the end you listen and it's shit. And then now you can listen to the track. You like it, you don't like it, but it's good. And it was very because of emulation of all the people behind. And this is very good, uh, a good lesson because I think that uh, a recording studio, it's too much sacralized. It's too much like, no, nobody can get in. Only the engineer. And this for me, it's, you have to throw away all this. Okay, but how would you do it? I mean, like, um, if you take Eric's studio, for example, um, and poor Eric, in his defense yesterday, he works on a PC normally, and the computer was not set up, so he was like... He was. <laughs> and also, he was, it was probably the first time in his life that he had 40 people in the room. I think for him it was a nightmare, okay? I'm sure today he thinks it was a nightmare, and I'm sure in three weeks he gonna, he's going to say, wow, it was fantastic. I discovered this. I can work under pressure. It's very hard to work under pressure. It's very hard. Uh, I think you somehow can handle that, but probably it's a different scale. But let's, how do you get that sort of bus going? Let's say my living room doesn't hold 40 people, really. And, but if I was to record someone, and probably not style-wise, but if I want to have like the same kind of energy a Robert Owens would have or an Eminem would have, where you have the feeling that even at a very low level, he's like, Screaming at you, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but, that, but at a low kind of level, like both of them, even though they're doing yeah, something yeah. musically. How do I now, create that is, sort of ambience this is without else. 40 people? This is something else. It makes me think about a Jill Scotteron song mm. when he's talking about the blues. Mm. And, and one day in this song, at one moment, he said, And the America give us the atmosphere to give the blues. Is that you can't fight against the life of the artist. I have, in my uh, record collection, I have thousands of records, very well recorded, like uh, incredible in America, with all the best musicians, the music is shit. What, what do you keep with this at the end? What do you care about this? It has been fantastic, they spend millions of dollars, you don't care. And I have also at the same time, uh, for example, The Stooge, Iggy Pop and The Stooge, recorded like, incredible way of recorded, completely junky, alcohol, girls everywhere, naked in the studio, and it's good. The music is good. The sound is horrible, but the music is good. So you always have to think this. After you can do Michael Jackson, thriller, the sound is very good, the music is very good. Okay, super. But uh, you know, you, you don't always have uh, these possibilities. So it's very important to feel. Feel free. It's a small uh, for the run. So after we did this, you see everything is played in this album except the beats. That's why now I do an album very electronic and the, the next Cassius album is going to be nearly techno, very electronic because we want to always change each time to not say it again, say it again, say it again. Okay, on to the hands-on thing. What, sorry? On to the hands-on thing. Okay, so we have... 20 minutes, the clock taken away Tw now. 20 minutes? So we have the original, okay? We're gonna try to do a quick remix. I don't, you're gonna tell me what you want. I make it, you listen to the original, okay? So it's very noisy. So, just a way of uh, showing that, uh, again, I'm sorry, I always say the same thing, but, the free, no, the, feel free. 
Feel free to do anything. There's someone in the room. Feel free to say to yourself, it's not because I didn't spend five hours on it that it's not good. We spend five minutes on it. It's not <coughs> incredible, but it's cool. We can uh, work it out a little bit more after. But always record everything, your, your first ideas. In all this that we've done in five minutes, there's the essence of everything that uh, I've understood with all the years. And even if it's not very clear and it's not a, a hit single or anything. And always save. What? And always save. In yes, and I saved it already because I think it can be good. I'm going to send it to the English. <laughs> but uh, I think I prefer the bread beef one. I don't know with you. But. Yeah, yeah. So, well, uh, thank you. I think we're going to go on and twiddle a little bit while everyone is having lunch. And see you back here in half an hour, but not before we give the man a hand. Thank you.